There's a dark star rising in this week's episode as we take a look at the world-burning warship that was just immortalized in toy form in this year's Transformers Legacy line. These are the basics on the Decepticon space cruiser, the Nemesis. Though a well-recognized part of Transformers stories today, the Nemesis didn't play a big role in the original 1980s series. In fact, the ship wasn't even named back then. It originated in the story treatment written by Marvel Comics editor Jim Shooter during the development of the Transformers franchise in 1983. Shooter's story, which was adapted to become both the first issue of the Transformers comic and the first episode of the cartoon, described how, when Optimus Prime's Autobots left Cybertron in their ship the Ark, Megatron and his Decepticons pursued them in their own vessel. Ambushing the Ark, the Decepticons left their ship to board the Autobot craft, and in the chaos of the fight, the Ark crashed on prehistoric Earth, knocking all the Transformers within offline for four million years until they awakened in 1984. However, Shooter's story didn't mention what happened to the Decepticon ship, leading to the cartoon and the comic coming up with their own different ideas for its fate. In the cartoon, what became of the ship wasn't immediately addressed. Instead, after awakening, the Decepticons constructed a new space cruiser to return to Cybertron. This new ship, which in the 21st century was retroactively given the name The Victory, would have a much larger role in the cartoon than the original, after the Autobot Mirage caused it to crash into the ocean, and the Decepticons rebuilt the wreck into an underwater complex that served as their headquarters for the first two seasons of the show. The fate of their original ship was eventually revealed in the 1985 episode Microbots. It had crashed on Earth at the same time as the Ark, in the jungles of South America. After human archaeologists unearthed the wreck, Megatron recovered the ship's power core, the Heart of Cybertron, and used it to temporarily boost his own power levels. In the comic, on the other hand, it was explained that when the Decepticons had left their ship, Shockwave had remained behind to man the craft. A 1986 story written for the United Kingdom's version of the comic then revealed that when Shockwave followed the Ark down to Earth, he left the ship in a cloaked orbit around the planet, where it floated undisturbed until the present day, when it was destroyed in the test firing of a new Decepticon weapon. However, in 1990, the American comic ignored this story and presented its own alternate fate for the craft. Here, Shockwave had parked it on the bottom of the Irish Sea and would briefly return to it in the present day to use it as a headquarters. After that, it was almost a decade before the Decepticon ship was seen again, but it finally returned in 1999 in the Beast Wars cartoon. This series named the ship Nemesis for the first time, and presented yet another take on what became of it after its attack on the Ark, depicting it as having crashed in the Atlantic Ocean. Beast Wars told the story of two warring groups of Transformers from the future who travelled back in time to prehistoric Earth, one of whom, the evil Predacon Tarantulus, found and repaired the Nemesis. In the series finale, the Predacons sought to use the ship to alter history by destroying the Autobots as they lay dormant aboard the Ark, but were foiled when the heroic Maximo, Rhinox, crashed one of the Ark's shuttlecraft into the Nemesis, blowing it out of the sky. The ship was last seen falling over the horizon, the suggestion being that it would go on to crash in South America, as seen in the original cartoon. Once an almost forgotten piece of Transformers history, its appearance in Beast Wars, in a larger and more dramatic role than it had ever played in classic media, really made the Nemesis famous. Off the back of this impressive showing, many new series in the 21st century went on to feature the ship with increased prominence. 
following Beast Wars' lead and depicting it as the most terrifyingly powerful warship in Decepticon history, the direct counterpart of and occupying the same legendary status as the Autobots' iconic arc. The Nemesis has appeared in cartoons, film, comic books and more in its classic role as the vessel used by the Decepticons to leave Cybertron, each series putting its own spin on the ship's story. In some, it crashes, in others, it remains airborne, but either way, in modern media, it typically serves as the villain's base of operations while away from their homeworld, taking over the role that, in the 80s cartoon, was occupied by the other ship that became their undersea base. The most significant media appearance of the Nemesis in the 21st century thus far is probably 2010's Transformers Prime. In this animated series, the ship served as the Decepticon's flying, mobile headquarters on Earth, hidden from detection by stealth fields. Though not mentioned in the show itself, several pieces of associated media, most prominently the 2012 video game Fall of Cybertron, explained that in this continuity, the Nemesis was created from the deactivated body of the gigantic dinosaur Decepticon, Trypticon, after he was defeated by the Autobots on Cybertron millions of years ago. In the 2012 showcase episode, Flying Mind, after sabotage by the Autobot Bulkhead brought the Nemesis crashing to Earth's surface, Megatron repaired the ship with an infusion of the mystical Dark Energon but the substance wound up giving the ship a life and will of its own once again, and it turned against the Decepticons until the Dark Energon could be purged from its systems. When a new toy of Trypticon was released in 2016's Titan's Return toy line, the figure was given a spacecraft alternate mode in homage to the Prime take on the Nemesis. But this wouldn't be the last time that the Nemesis was depicted as being a Transformer. In 2021, the Kingdom toy line featured a toy of the Autobot Ark that could convert into a giant robot mode, which was prominently showcased in the tie-in Netflix animated series Taking Down the Nemesis. And with the concept of a transforming Ark now established, it seemed like it was only a matter of time until a Nemesis figure was made to complement it. And indeed, a true transforming Nemesis toy arrived in 2023 as part of the Legacy line, able to convert from a starship based on the classic cartoon design to a female robot mode. Now, notably, the Decepticon's Nemesis isn't the only Nemesis in Transformers history. In late 1998, less than a year before Beast Wars would finally give the Decepticon spaceship a name and truly put it on the map, the Japanese original spin-off series, Beast Wars Second, introduced another vessel that, by complete coincidence, was also named Nemesis. Commanded by the Predacon Emperor Galvatron, this Nemesis was a mobile fortress the size of an entire planet, able to drain energy from other planets through its massive single eye. Galvatron used his Nemesis to suck the powerful Angle Moi energy out of the planet Gaia until it was destroyed by Maximal Commander Lyo Convoy. This Nemesis would later appear in the Transformers Legends manga, which revealed that it was originally constructed by the Decepticon Galvatron, and it was also adapted into IDW Publishing's comic books, which reimagined it, not unlike the Decepticon ship, as a giant Transformer actually named Nemesis, who served the ancient Cybertronian leader Onyx Prime, and later fused with the monster planet Unicron to become one of his eyes. But even though that means it wasn't technically the first to bear the name, it's the Decepticon nemesis that's become the best known, once little more than a footnote in the franchise's history, elevated by Beast Wars into an iconic recurring element of Transformers lore. And those are the basics on the Nemesis. If you've enjoyed this trip through the ever-evolving world of Transformers canon, I've got over 200 more videos like this, so be sure to subscribe and check them out. Plus, you can get early access to every new video if you support the show on Patreon.